Congrats on your 30th cancellation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, you know, it's taken a long time to get to this point, but, you know, we're uh, we're getting them like now. I mean, it, it's coming about once a week now. Uh, it really is. I mean, this is it's being a lot now. And so it's as it, honestly, I'm going to be real, guys. I love it. Everybody thinking about me, talking about me. They're all thinking about me, all talking about me. Uh, what, what's what's Asman doing? What's he saying? What did he say today? What did he say yesterday? Living rent free? I know I am. I absolutely am. It's just I don't even know where to begin with this, right? Uh, give me give me a minute, and I'll I'll go, and um, you know we'll we'll talk about everything because it's been pretty crazy to be honest with you guys. Uh, it's been pretty impressive to see the kind of uh, uh, the the kind of response I've been getting. People are trying to cancel me. They want me canceled again. Why is that? Well, because today is the day that ends in the letter Y. Now, what exactly did I do? Well, Asmund Gold is a gigantic piece of shit. And the reason we're currently in the midst of what can be described as hell, even for people divorced from the current situation. Well, if this person's in hell, Where's a person that lives in Palestine or Ukraine? You know, I wonder, like, where does that rank on the scale? Because... <laughs> you know what I mean? It's super hell. <laughs> that you're in hell? I don't think so, man. I think that you have a few people that are disagreeing with you on the internet. That's not really a big deal, is it? They're hell divers too. Yeah, apparently. And so... Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Mark Kern Grums uh, says on Twitter, he says, Cancel pigs are going after Asmongold and trying to get people to unsponsor him, including Capcom. These people are actually disgusting harassers that have terrorized gaming and comics for too long. Asmon has a right to cover gaming and have opinions. Also, um, so this is the, this is the issue that, this is the issue that people have, is that they have no issue and no problem talking about their opinions on things, but whenever somebody else has another opinion that's different than theirs, now they're being harassed. I'm sorry, guys. Harassment is not the same as disagreement. If I'm disagreeing with you, you're not being harassed. And also, there have been tons of people, people are talking about me, uh, you know, them getting harassed. Oh my God. There are people commenting every hour for me to kill myself. Oh, kill yourself. I hope you die. Uh, you're a piece of shit. Everything like that. And I want to let you know it's not their fault. Look, there's mentally ill kids on the internet that shouldn't... They should be in, like, a, I don't know, like a mental institution or something. But we got rid of those, so they're on the Twitter. And so it's not really their fault that these kids are saying this stuff. It's just what happens. So... How, how am I the harasser whenever I'm getting the death threats probably more than they are? How does this make sense? By that logic, aren't they harassing me? What about this? And so the problem, I think, comes down to people that feel like they have a moral mandate. They have a moral mandate to talk about their opinions on issues and to expect everybody else to bow down to that opinion. And if other people disagree, even in a way that's respectful or non-aggressive, it's not enough for them. Because everything that is a disagreement is aggressive to them, and any type of disagreement is violence. It is harassment. And if you escalate the vocabulary, you create a world where responding to that in a distorted way right like trying to ruin somebody's life over disagreeing with you on twitter you you make that reasonable because you're changing the vocabulary of it and i think that's what happens and so these people are very um uh they're they're very toxic they're extremely toxic and i think that every normal person on twitter there's like seven of them um realizes that and I think that people are tired of it. I think that people are tired of being lectured on morality, tired of being told what to think by people who are, by all accounts, shitty. I don't want to be told what to do by a fucking asshole. 
a fucking dumbass. Like, I don't want to be lectured about how much of a bad person I am by somebody who's worse than me. What's this? People are just tired of the left in general. I don't think people are tired of the left. I think most people on the internet are probably more left-wing, including me. But what people are tired of is they are tired of bad actors that have inserted themselves into the space, created a position of power for themselves, and then leveraged that position of power in order to do things that are in their own agenda. Not towards a leftist agenda, not towards anything else, just towards their own agenda. And they do obviously make left-wing people look bad. They, they absolutely do. I think that left-wing, like, uh, like left-wing politics has like a huge problem. Like, for example, like right-wing politics and like, like right-wing politics is also having this problem now, but for a long time it didn't, right? Where it's like there was a clear line between conservatism and like, uh, you know, people that are like, I don't really want to say Nazis, right? But like people that are just like super totalitarian. But like ever since like Trump and then like, you know, emotional escalation, uh, I think that there is kind of a harder way to get those people out of the space in, in right-wing politics as well. But in left-wing politics, what happens a lot is that it's kind of like, you, you, it's like they can't remove these bad actors and extremists from their spaces because the bad actors and extremists to be fair, are popular. And that's really the truth. So you have people that are effectively like, I think that they are damaging the entire progressive movement. I think that it, it does damage progressive movements whenever you have people that are trying to push against racism that have a tweet history of being racist. Because any reasonable person is going to see that and be like, oh, geez, like, this is fucking bullshit. Like, I don't want to be around these guys. And so whenever that happens, the entire movement is damaged. The entire movement is weaker and the culture inside of those movements doesn't it, it, it doesn't have like an apparatus or like a, a mechanism to remove those people. And so they just stay in there and they make it worse. Yeah, they are the progressive movement. Well, they weren't for a very long time. Uh, it, it's very interesting for me to see this, you know, uh, Back in 2009, I had signed up and I, I got hired to do, um, like, kind of like a activism work. I was, like, 19 at the time. And uh, for, like, Greenpeace to support, you know, environmentalism and to support things like Planned Parenthood and stuff like that that I believed in. And so, really, I mean, this is, and, and this is something, like, I just straight up, like, I went on a website. I signed up. I wrote a big, long fucking thing. They called me the next day. It was the next fucking day. I remember I was at my dad's house. It was one of the first jobs that I had actually applied for that I wanted to have. I don't really view that as a, um, what do you call it? I had that too to get laid? <laughs> no, I just, I mean, like, to me, I mean, I, I have a lot of opinions on things and I'm always willing to, you know, like, put my money where my mouth is or, you know, like, really go out there and, and try to advocate for things because I think that's the right option, right? That's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, if you can't fight for what you believe in, why do you even exist? And so anyway, um, like... I think this is a this is a very, very big systemic problem. And um, people are going to try to get mad at me, but I hope that there are like people that are like more left wing that understand that I'm actually trying to help them. In the long run I am. Because these people, like these sweet baby people and these guys that are just like randomly throwing out like a bunch of words, then acting like animals, these people are going to ruin your movement. They're going to ruin your your progress because people see that and they just reflexively are against it. And whenever this person is encapsulating your values as well as their own, they will then in turn be against your values as well. People might disagree with me because I am against people that are on their side, but I hope they understand that those people are actually not on their side. They are not on the vast majority of a normal people's sides. These are extreme people that are bad actors. But you are left-wing, though? Uh, it's not about whether you're left-wing or right-wing. Like, the fixation on determining whether somebody is on one side or another is done by simple-minded people. Uh, I think that there's a lot of topics that people have different varied viewpoints on, and it's not as simple as just, like, one category or another. So, whenever I see people get angry about me, about me doing this, I think that they don't realize that I'm trying to help them. I am trying to help them because I remember what it was like 
whenever you could have any type of person in a movie, and if somebody was upset about it, people would just think that that person was an idiot. There wasn't this, like, massive, uh, you know, movement against having representation of minorities and different types of people in movies. It was just, it is what it is. But because these people who see everything literally in black and white have tried to co-opt these movements for their own benefit, by the way, not for any sort of ideology, for their own benefit, uh, they have ruined these movements and they've taken them and turned them into tools that alienate people away from what would be a good cause. And you see this now on Twitter. You see people now that are like, we're, we're going as far back to be like, I'm seeing popular things about how, like, being gay is bad. Like, I didn't see this five years ago. I didn't see, I, like, I didn't see this ten years ago. Like, it, it's just like, and, and you, you did see it. Keep in mind, you did see it, but, like, it wasn't as accepted. It wasn't as just defined. The pendulum swings, yeah, and, and people are responding to this movement. And it's it's very dangerous. Uh, people who lack imagination and a monologue are the only ones that need to see themselves represented in a movie or TV. I think it's fine to have representation in movies or TV, but it should just come from an artistic intent and not from a uh, you know a, um, uh, like an executive like a list, right? Uh, that's that's really what the difference is. People are sick of bending the knee to the woke movement. Well, I think that people are not sick of bending the knee to the woke movement. People are sick of bending the knee to hypocrites. People are sick of bending the knee to people who go against all of their values. And I was there 3,000 years ago in 2008, 2005, 2010, whenever this happened for the first, for, for the first time in at least my life. Where before then, I'll tell you, um, there were a lot more conservative people in, in positions of power at that point. Especially in terms of the way that... Uh, the way that the United States was viewed in responding to 9-11. This was a, a tremendous thing. And then they used, obviously, 9-11 to pass the Patriot Act. They used it to push, you know, like hardcore conservatism, uh, surveillance state, etc. Uh, a lot of things Alex Jones said back then were fucking right. And so that was before he got involved in, in fucking identity politics and he actually cared about trusting or not trusting the government. And so, anyway... Uh, all of these things happened, and ca what came with it was uh, Obama even saying in 2008 that, you know, marriage is between a man and a woman. Like, that's how regressive it was even then. And I think that what happened and why it changed is because people saw these, like, right-wing uh, political... Um, the fucking, like, I don't know, pe people, right? Uh, like, figureheads being exposed for being crackheads for being exposed for having like five gay hookers that they're all hooking up with at the same time while they're on cocaine. And this is the same person that wants to say that, you know, we need to have prayer in school. And that's why I think that entire movement completely lost its way and completely lost its wind. Like now they don't have nearly the power they used to. And the reason why is because the general population sees that and they see a fucking liar. They see a piece of shit. You guys, uh, how many of you are old enough to see where I'm saying? Y'all remember that? Yeah. And so you're seeing it happen again. And it's disappointing. This is why Great Empires Far, people see the Emperor for who they are. Well, I think the problem is that um, power begets more power, and people that seek power are oftentimes the people who shouldn't have it. And so you have people that are using, you know, they want to get to these positions in order to, you know, exercise some sort of willpower on somebody else. And uh, whenever they get there, th th there is no actual, like, ideology to it. There is no, like, uh, principle to it. It's just do what I tell you to do, right? And so this is what I hope that a lot of people understand that might be against me on, like, these different websites is that I'm trying to help you. These people are not good for you. They're not going to help anybody. They're only in it for themselves. They're bad actors. And they stand to cause everybody to regress. Like, now we're seeing uh, bills banning pornography. Like, oh, let's ban Pornhub. What the fuck are we talking about? Let's ban Pornhub. Oh, let's go ban TikTok. 
Where is the actual principle in this? Where's the logic? Is porn bad? Then why is Twitter there? Is porn bad? Then why are all of the other fucking porn sites there? So it's like there's no actual logic or principle to this. It's just reactionary garbage that happens because people are fighting back against a movement that they feel like has completely lost its way. And I think that's what's happened. It's impossible to reason with them. And this is why, for example, I haven't really gone and tried to disprove or argue with people that are saying that I am a, you know, I, I let's see, what are the ones? I hate women, hate trans people, hate other races, super racist, love to harass people. Um, what else? Did I miss something? I hate gay people. Yes, yes. I forgot about gay people. Yes. Uh, Nazi, naturally. Um, toxic. <laughs> Come on, I'm a gamer, right? Um, and so, uh, do we have one more? I hate women. I said that. Maybe I, I, I hate fat people. True. Um, so... The reason why I don't go in and try to argue with people about these topics is because I believe you cannot reason a person out of a position that they did not reason themselves into. There will never be a string of words that will convince this person that I am not what they think that I am. Because people just don't like admitting that they're wrong. That's all there is to it. Yeah, they're irrational people. And so, like, I I'm not like, how can I convince a person like that? How do you win if you pressure companies to take some sponsors? Interesting. Well, there, there's no way. Like, I think that you don't have to worry about winning because winning will happen on its own. Like this will like it is a it is an inevitable outcome that people in power will abuse the power and then be overthrown by other people who will then get in power, who will then abuse the power, who will then be over. You see how this happens, right? And this is just this is the human condition. I don't think this is ever going to go away. And so all you have to do is wait, and you're starting to see it now happen. The Gavin Strat feels the wait. Yeah, people don't realize companies don't care about them. They're just being minimized to tokens based on their identities. Well, and I did a video about this, right? And um, how many of you guys saw the video that I did? I, I released it. I, I recorded it last night. Uh, yeah, what, what did you guys think about the video? Just not giving them more attention, right? Oh, I don't think it's a problem to give them attention. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it was good. I, I yeah, I hope you guys liked it. And um, I, I saw that like again, and this is this is the mind of the people that are unhappy about me, right? Is that you can look, go clean your room, right? Okay. Is there a red bar over the video? I don't see the red bar. And you can see, you know, if you watch a video, the red bar is there. They never saw it. So a lot of people like farming likes and doing this kind of stuff. But they don't actually, there, there's no actual thought to this. There's no actual, like, uh, reasoning or perspective to it. There, there's no actual argument. It's just an emotional, like, outburst. Which makes sense. A lot of these people are probably uh, 23, right? Yeah, I think people assume whenever people make anti-woke content, they're an extremist and so. And that's what your YouTube clickbait has become. Well, um... I think that's definitely true in some cases. It's the same with anything else. But, and, and this is the problem, is that if you can't recognize and remove bad actors from your space, people will eventually remove your space. That's what will, that's what will happen. They attack you personally because they can't defeat you in a logical way. Well, so like, uh, like a lot of people under, uh, like they probably wonder like, why am I like this, right? Like that's, and that's a pretty fair question. Like, why am I like this? So growing up, like, I actually had, like, a very big fixation and, like, focus on, uh, like, looking good and, like, basically having people like me, right? Like, wearing name brand clothes and, like, caring about this stuff a lot. Uh, this is, and I'm talking about, like, how old was I? Um, I'm talking about, like, middle school and elementary school, primarily, right? And so I really, really cared about that. And I had like a very, I was very insecure about it. Like I would even be insecure about like, you know, my mom had like a really shitty car. It was actually a truck. 
and like people would like comment like oh when's your mom getting a new car and like you know she would never get a new car right uh next car she got was the one that was my car that would drive her around it and so i felt very bad about this i felt awful about it and um you know for years and years i tried to uh kind of um you know be a person that i wasn't and try to like live up to this expectation and uh then I, I went to so I, I went to like two different high schools whenever I was uh, in, in ninth grade and um, I was a freshman and I went to a high school at the beginning and it was like a very, very rich high school where not very rich, but it was like, you know, a scale of like one to ten. It's like an eight. Right. And so I saw a lot of the people that were there who cared about the same things that I did. And I saw like the extreme version of the way that I felt. And I realized that all of these people were losers and I didn't like any of them and I didn't want to be that kind of a person. And that's that caused me, I was like 15 at the time. Uh, yeah, probably about like 15. And I was like, these people aren't like, these people are never really going to be successful. They're never going to do anything important in their life. They're just trying to fit in so people don't realize that they're actually just NPCs, basically, right? That wasn't my mindset then, but that's effectively what I thought. And uh, then I just decided to stop caring about the way that I looked, uh, stop caring about the way that I felt. And I think that also, like, uh, there's a very other big component to this is that, like, uh, growing up, I was, like, very, very, very... And, like, now I still am, Of obviously. I think almost everybody is. But um, I am... I was extremely, right? I would have like panic attacks over it and everything about being afraid of dying and like the idea of like death and everything. And so because of that, I would try to avoid doing anything that would like potentially like put me in danger or like, you know, I would, I would be anxious about everything all the time. And then as I got older, um, and this is about the same time, somewhere around there, it was like, I was finally able to like come to terms with that at least, you know, not entirely, right? But, like, just by, like, one degree, maybe two degrees, and start to just embrace the fact that everybody rots. That's all there is. To, there's nothing that's going to happen. There's nothing. You can't change it. You can't do anything. Uh, there's nothing, like... And, and obviously, like, you know, having my mom pass away, you know, that was, like, a fuck. like, oh, my God, right? That was horrible. And so I had a lot of these experiences happen to me, and it... I try to remind myself that I am not anything more than just a more intelligent version of a monkey. I don't view myself as anything more than that. And I try to remind myself about that whenever I'm unhappy about like my situation in life or, you know, like some sort of existential dread or some version of that is that you don't even know entirely what you are thinking and what you are. And so I've tried to remove myself as much as possible from caring at all about anything in general. I know that might sound weird, but like, the more that I've been able to do that, the happier I've been in my life. And it, it it's at a point now where like, there are things in my life that make me unhappy. And, and it's like, this is, this is bad. I wish it was different, right? Sure, sure. But I no longer live a life that is pursuing happiness. I just simply enjoy... I, I, I don't even really like thinking about happiness because I think that it's like it's, a, it's kind of like a stupid term. Uh, I like that the term fulfillment more. But I gain fulfillment just by simply existing and by expressing myself and by being who I am. And I can do that in any way that I want. And I feel like the only thing that is bad to do is to not be that person. And that's why I am the way I am. And it might not really make sense for a lot of people. And I don't think anybody should live the way that I live. Um, it, it's awful. But uh, for me, it it's very grounding. And like that's why I never really changed my life at all. Like after I got more money or anything like that. Because... It doesn't matter like none of it matters like it, it like no, there will never be a point where it's like if i have a house that's this big or i have this thing like nothing in life can ever really make me happy and i think that's a good and a bad thing and so i stop trying to think about like a thing that i can get some sort of light at the end of the tunnel 
and I just try to enjoy being in the tunnel. Because I don't think that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So you might as well enjoy being in the tunnel. And that's the way that I feel. This might sound like a, this is probably like, you know, I sound like a crazy person or something like this. But um, that, that's why I am the way that I am. And so any, any insult that people have at me or anything like that, it doesn't bother me. It genuinely doesn't. Um, like, especially with like things that like, you know, I, I post a picture of my own room and people make fun of me for it. Do you really think that I was so stupid that I didn't realize that it looked bad? I did it because I thought it was funny and I like the shock value of it because I know that other people aren't like I am. I know these are probably the ramblings of a crazy man, but um, it's my right to be crazy. So I'll keep being crazy until I decide not to be and then I won't be anymore because I can do anything that I want because I exist and I have my own free will and I love it. And so and, and that's that's really the truth. And that's not ever going to uh, to stop being enjoyable for me. Hopefully that gives people a little bit of insight into kind of the way that I think and, um, you know, the way that I feel about things. And so, yeah, uh, <laughs> there it is. So, yeah, comments about cleaning my room or whatever uh, don't really bother me. But it's fine with me because uh, I can. Uh, if I want to, I just clean it up and I've done it before. And, you know, I've thought about getting some things in, in my house cleaned up because it is uh, inconvenient for me. But uh, I just haven't really done it because I've just been busy thinking or doing other things, right? And so, yeah. What about prolonging your health? I understand the material things. I think that there's like a balance, right? Because like the truth is that a lot of you guys, like we all do certain things that probably would be better if we didn't do them for our health. Whether it's, you know, driving in a fast car and, you know, maybe going a little bit too fast. Maybe it's like drinking alcohol. Maybe it's doing drugs. Maybe it's drinking soda. Maybe it's like eating a certain type of food, etc. Um, and... It's like if you can't live your life and do what you enjoy doing, even if you live longer, did you ever live at all? And it's always a, it's a balancing act, right? Now, I've been incredibly blessed. Like, you want to talk about privilege, I'll tell you a fucking privilege. The fact that I'm 33 fucking years old, I'm 135 pounds, I'm about six foot three, I never get sick. I never feel bad. Like, I had that one problem with my back, and that was it. And I can eat whatever I want. I only need to eat one meal a day. And I feel great pretty much all the time. And I never run out of energy. I sometimes I do, right? But if I get enough sleep, I don't. That is a massive privilege. I, I have been incredibly lucky. You get headaches a lot? I do. I, I do get headaches. I get headaches, like, right down here because of tension. Yeah, I, I actually have to take a muscle relaxer because of stress. I, I do have a lot of things that stress me out in my life. And, um, you know, I, I don't, who cares? Like, we all have things that stress ourselves out. But, like, uh, I take muscle relaxers. It helps me. And, uh, you know, that's it. Problem solved. And so, yeah. So you're not totally fine, right? No, I, I don't know. I mean, like, right? I mean, there's like a million things that can go wrong with a person. You regret a lot of these things, but you won't ever know it until later. Well, eventually everybody dies, and so uh, eventually there will be something that will kill everybody. And so, like, uh, at, at a certain point, like, will I regret it? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, like, what the fuck? You can go do a total checkup at a clinic doctor, see if your theory of being healthy is true. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, I'm talking about the way that I feel in general, right? I mean, obviously there could be something wrong internally. Like, I had a test done, like, uh... Well, I had like a couple of like smaller tests done like very recently because I went through a, a period of like having um, like health health scares. Like how many of you guys have gone through like a period of that where you think like there's something wrong with you and then like you have to go to the doctor and get it checked out because it like gets in your head. Uh, I, I had that happen uh, me never. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that wouldn't happen to me either, but it did. And uh, like I went to the emergency room actually three times because of that. And uh, they did tests on me then, and everything was totally fine. I felt like my blood pressure was a bit too high. Uh, it was like 120, and maybe like 125. And I think that's a bit high. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, 120 is normal. Yeah, yeah. That's normal. It is, but um, like my dad had very, very low blood pressure, and he is 76 now. He'll be 77 pretty soon. And uh, his blood pressure is about the same as mine is. And so, like, I think about, you know, as you age, obviously, like, you know, it will probably get higher. And so that's why I would want to make sure that I, 
you know, make sure that I'm in, uh, you know, good physical condition. Like I, I, uh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. He had a whole total physical and he was completely fucking fine too. Like everything he said, there was perfect. Right. And so, uh, you know, like I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very blessed. Right. I'm, I'm, I, I'm tremendously privileged in a way that most people don't even consider. Is it like, I don't have these problems. Because I hear about, like, friends of mine tell me, they're like, oh, I need glasses now. Oh, you know, I'm having this issue, or, oh, there's that. And I just feel like, oh, my God. Imagine living with that kind of a debuff. And I've been trying to exercise more. I exercise yesterday, and I make sure to walk at least a mile a day. And, uh, you know, I want to try to make sure that I, I, I don't ever uh, take that for granted. Because, yeah, I mean, I am getting older, and I'm pretty much the only one of any of my friends that has nothing. You know, I feel totally great. All the time, I have nothing. And so, I, uh, I, I, I treat it as a tremendous privilege. I'm, I'm very lucky. And so, yeah, the no, no real teeth debuff? Not so, yeah, yeah, I, I, my teeth are fucked up, but that's mainly because of my own actions. Elon Ma, Elon having asthma's back? I did see this! I did! I didn't even believe it was true, but look at this! So yeah, Elon Musk even tweeted about the, uh, the the whole situation with me, right? And um, complete backfire. Yeah, Sweet Baby Inc. Sweet Baby uh, blight on the gaming industry. All they do is make games terrible and try to cancel people. It cannot go broke soon enough. So even Elon Musk heard about the uh, the situation. That is crazy to me. Oh my god, I'm kind of shocked. Honestly, I really am. Maybe watches. Yeah, maybe watches the show. I don't know what to say. And um, yeah, a lot of people are. And I think really that's the issue is that's why I haven't really even said anything about it. It's like, I think that people will realize the ridiculousness of this kind of stuff uh, sooner than later. The issue that people have, and this is what that you have to understand, is that these people want to completely destroy you as an individual so that nobody else thinks to question them or uh, like go against them at all. Uh, I, I want to promise you guys one thing that... I'm not necessarily against every single thing that they even stand for. But I'm not going to ever, like, it doesn't matter how many times they complain to sponsors. It doesn't matter how many times they make tweets that are popular that say that I'm bald. Uh, this, it will never stop me from doing this. There, it, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to stop talking about it. I'm not going to stop, you know, making videos about it. I'm not going to stop, you know bringing awareness to this it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter anything it's just going to keep happening and to the extent that they fight me on it it will make it worse because i think that the more and more that more normal people outside of the video game sphere hear about these issues and these people the more their position will seem extreme so, yeah, if they want to make it a bigger deal, go ahead. But I don't think they're going to like the outcome of that. People usually come around to the truth, but it takes a long time. Do you remember what I said about the thing that I said about AI? That the first day will be people discussing about how bad I am, and then the third day will be people, will be people discussing about the way that I'm right? I said that the first day that happened. And it did. People eventually come around to the truth. All you have to do is wait. Yep, the truth always prevails. It just takes time. So, yeah, a lot of people have uh, have defended me about this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's crazy, as I said before, whenever people just, like, kind of go through, like, the laundry list of, like, normal insults, like, alt-right, stuff like this. It's like, okay, yeah, for sure. And, like, there are some of the terms whenever people do those where I think to myself, I'm like, okay, well, this person has clearly just, like, lost the plot entirely. So, is that wrong? Openly actively trying to destroy existing IPs? Well, I think more importantly, they're trying to uh, shut down people who disagree with them. And people who call them out. And I think that, like, really, if they don't want... Like, if you don't want to block these people or whatever, that's fine. But, like, to have their own position and have their own platform removed, I think is a very different situation. And I think that's what ends up happening with this. Is that you have these people that it's not enough for them to just simply not engage in a dialogue, they have to remove the dialogue. And the reason why is because they cannot engage in a dialogue. They genuinely think they're infallible. They do. And because they think they're infallible, they think that any bad action they take 
is in the pursuit of pursuing a goal that is an ideal. And so it's okay for them to burn witches at the stake. And even if you kill some innocent people, it's all right because you're fighting against evil. And so as soon as somebody realizes that they, or somebody, as soon as somebody th believes that they have like a moral mandate, it allows them to do the worst things in the world. Like every single, like, I don't know about every single, but like many, many, many of like the biggest atrocities in, in, in like uh, history were done by people who thought that they were doing the right thing. I would say almost every single one of them was. There's very rarely instances where people know that they're doing the wrong thing and they keep doing it. No, they think that they are the hero in their own story. Classic anime, anime villain trope even. And and it makes it more compelling. That's why, for example, like Thanos was a great villain in like Marvel or, um, you know, and, and there are like other examples, right? Even Sauron was like, not, Sauron was not like, at least in the way that he's portrayed in like extended lore is not as just as, as one dimensionally evil. Uh, in the same way that like Melkor is one dimensionally evil. Um, Killmonger, yeah, Killmonger and, and Black Panther. Yeah, what a what an amazing example. Like, I remember watching that, and, like, at the end scene, I was like, I kind of wanted Killmonger to win. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I liked him more than, than Black Panther. I thought he was awesome. But, yeah, um, absolutely. And that's the kind of, that's that's a good villain. And the reason why that, ki that type of character is so good is because, and this is the best thing about, like, fantasy and, like, narratives, is that the best narratives are usually, in many cases, the ones that are that people can see the uh, the parallels in reality. Yeah, people don't realize you can argue yourself into a correct position and with most people still be wrong. Killmonger was such a great villain. Yeah, he really was. And um, I was actually like kind of disappointed that like, you know, it killed him in, at the end of the movie, right? I mean, spoiler, right? But it's been out for five fucking years or something. So too bad. Uh, but yeah, I was like hoping like, oh, maybe this is going to happen. You know, like maybe something else will happen in the future. But uh you know, apparently not. Let's be honest, all I have to do is show the comment. Uh, this says you can't be racist towards a race of people, and this person should just be muted from the internet. I like it. Uh, it's like entertaining flat earthers. Well, what the truth is, is that if you expose that ideology to, like, a general audience of people, like, for example, like, if you ask people on Twitter, can you be racist to a white person, a lot of people on Twitter are going to say no. If you go to Walmart and you ask people, can you be racist to a white person, a lot of people are going to say yes. And the reason why is that there is a massive disconnect between internet discourse and real life. And that's what I said. The more that these people escalate this issue, the more the public and the general public will see this and be like, oh, these people are nuts. Like, what the fuck? So that's why I don't, I don't have a problem with them escalating it because I realize that once it gets high enough people will will immediately see my perspective yes these are terminally online mentally ill people brain rot yeah how they can have so little logic and uh, always me well they're not basing it off of logic they're basing it off of um uh their, their own it's they're they're basing it off of their own bigotry and their own self their own goals and so everything is is, is uh referential from there Everything is like, that's the goal. It's not, there's not a principle to it in the first place. That's why it's kind of people should never be in charge of any sort of media. Well, yeah, of course not. Why is it difficult? Understanding racism is bad. How stupid can people be? Well, because they're racist. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? I mean, fuck. I, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, Occam's razor. The simplest answer is probably the correct one. Yeah. Why, why do they not want to understand that racism is bad? Because they're fucking racist. <laughs> Duh. I mean, shit. They're closet racist. Well, the, the worst thing is that they're not. I just love them saying that you mainstreamed a hate group. Uh, the list of games really torn apart. Uh, Paper Tiger. Well, um, yeah, and I, I talk about every issue. And also, um, one thing that I, I find to be very interesting is that I feel like my coverage of this topic has actually been extremely, uh, like, balanced. And I even said initially, and I've gotten some flack from people by saying that the sweet baby themselves they're kind of a scapegoat right like everybody is mad at them but the truth is that these people didn't just like fucking barge into this company and tell them what to do they were invited and paid to go there and so it's like you can't really get mad at this one company and these people specifically like yeah these people are wrong and you know this person shouldn't be saying this yeah yeah, yeah for sure but the reality is that this is a systemic problem
and it's not something that's just you know uh like some different type of like a support group or a, a consultancy group exactly they were compensated for their opinion yeah yeah uh have you seen the takes from the ceo herself oh yeah no i'm not saying that sweet baby is good what i'm saying is that if sweet baby did not exist this problem still would that's my point and i think that people need to realize that and contextualize that around their frustration that's all i'm saying I'm not saying they're good not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that. Anyway, yeah, a lot of these people do try to, like, push back against things that I say. And I just, you know, I, I hope that they realize that, like, it doesn't matter how much they cry or how mad they get. The only thing that will make me do is do it more. And um, it doesn't matter, like, how many tweets or how many, you know, support groups that they make for themselves to get upset about something that I said or some mean thing that I didn't even do that they perceive me doing uh, it, it, it doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter I'm gonna keep doing it that's it